The really quick introduction to HubSpot is we are a company that sell a marketing platform around this inbound marketing methodology. Um, we went public last year. We have over 1,000 employees, over 15,000 customers. I think one of the interesting things about us is we sell software, but at any given month, we have around 3 million people visiting our blog and our website and the different content we produce um, because we actually do something called persona-driven marketing. So what I'm going to bring you through is a very, like, the 15-minute introduction to inbound marketing, if I can do that. Um, I kind of wanted to start by going back to 1965, so a time before we had all of these digital channels, a time before we had Snapchat, Vine, all, all of these different things that are just part of the marketing mix today, and take you through one of my favorite pieces of actual marketing. So back in 1965, one of the ways that companies actually grew the size of their business was through direct mail. Direct mail is still big in some places, like we're doing a lot of marketing in Germany and find the night that actually direct mail isn't dead there, but this is one of the best examples of just marketing. Take away the fact that it's direct mail. It's really flawless. And it has like all of the different elements that a great marketing needs. It has an introspective opening. So this is a letter from a company that sold marathon sneakers, and he's sending the letter to a prospective buyer within a university who coaches marathon runners. And he has an introspective opening, and he says, next fall, will your cross-country team be wearing the best shoes possible? Now, if you're that coach, you absolutely want the, your runners to be wearing the best shoe possible. Give them every chance you can for them to succeed. It has great social position, and it says, it mentions two of the most famous marathon runners from that era, and says, if we try to take our shoes away from these guys, we're going to actually have a fight on our hands. And it has great testimonials. It says, as a runner said, the only people who will be left wearing other shoes will either be uninformed or idiots. And it's really the closing line of this letter that makes it so remarkable. You are no longer uninformed. <laughs> so this is from a company called Blue Ribbon Sports Company. Does anyone here heard that name before? For, you, so they went on to become Nike. And this is from Phil McKnight. And if you think about Phil's problems back in 1965, they're very similar to our problems today as marketers. We're always trying to reduce the number of people who are uninformed about our products, about our services, to make them, educate them on what, how we can benefit them, educate them on how we can make their lives better. And if you fast forward to 2015, the really Great reason, one of the great reasons that um, it's to, you're, one of the great things about being a marketer today is it's really marketers who are the ones tasked with growth. And that's why it's so exciting to be a marketer. It's why I love being a marketer. If you take a typical business to business funnel, like 60% of the sales cycle is actually complete by the time someone picks up the phone and talks to a salesperson. So a huge amount of the education selling process is already done by the time your sales team are actually picking up the phone to talk to someone. And if you reverse engineer growth, like the mathematics of this is pretty simple. If you want to grow your business, you want to overachieve on revenue targets, you want to, your sales team to hit above 100% of their quota, you want to generate the right type of leads for the sales team, you want to make sure you're generating enough leads to make sure you get enough quality leads and generating enough traffic. And the cool thing about marketing is we're responsible for so much of that funnel and if you want to grow your business and keep on scaling, you kind of just rinse, repeat, fire some salespeople who underperform, my sales team hate when I say that, um, and then just keep on growing the size of your business. And this is uh, how we are measured in HubSpot, so the marketing team are measured in the exact same way as a sales team, so 95% of our sales reps quota actually comes from leads the marketing team generates. So the marketing team are a big reason for the company's success. The sales team are wholly reliant on the things we do. The other cool thing is that the marketing team can kind of celebrate with the sales team at the end of the month, so they can go out and do all the big cigars, they go out and all the drinks, because you know, they know they've had a tangible uh, benefit for the business. And if you think about a lot of traditional companies, they're still trying to operate like it was 10 years ago. You know, that marketing kind of traditional playbook does not work anymore. We skip TV ads. I don't watch TV, I watch Netflix, I never have to uh, watch an ad. There's been some talk today about things like ad blocking, but we don't click on online ads, we're trying to block them out. Like we're trying to take control of the experience we have online. People unsubscribe from email lists because email lists 
are usually rubbish. All we do is we spam people. We don't try to provide any value, take time to figure out who is behind the actual email address and what do they actually want to get from us. We send cold outbound emails. No one actually opens them because they don't provide value. We cold call people. Everybody hates that. No one likes picking up the phone anymore. You should never do like cold, band, cold outbound emails, cold calls, because we have so much information about people today. You should do warm calls. You should do warm outbound emails. And make sure that that first interaction you have with, some, interaction you have with someone is really valuable. You have so much information, it's just criminal to kind of do these things and not know who you're actually trying to talk to. And this is kind of what inbound marketing is. So inbound marketing is a, a marketing methodology that's based on content content and context. And to give you a really quick introduction of both, I first wanted to take you through the methodology. So this is all of the, our customers who buy our platform, do inbound marketing, kind of follow this methodology. It's a full funnel life cycle. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to attract the right type of people to our brand. So we do, it was mentioned in the last presentation, persona-driven marketing. We do persona-driven marketing all the way through the funnel from the content we put out to try to attract people who know nothing about our brand to when they're in our database, we try to give them things of value to convert them into tangible leads for our sales force to when we're actually closing them into customers to when we're at, they're actually customers, we're trying to provide them exper an experience that delights them, makes them happy, make sure that they can use our software and having a great experience. It costs five times more to acquire a customer than it does to retain, so why wouldn't we make sure that our customers are happy and successful? That's how we get a great business. So the first part around this is content. So there's been some, a lot of talk around content already. Content is one of the fundamental ways that successful businesses are marketing their companies today. Great, great companies have great, great content teams. And you want to think about content as actually generating assets for your business, like long-term assets that have long-term value for your business, whether they're blogs, whether they're tools, whether they're videos and podcast presentations. What are the things your audience want? What are the kind of content formats they'll find valuable? And make sure you create them, because these are the things that will help fuel your business. For example, we have a blog. We're a software company that gets over 1.5 million visits a month, and that's not plateau and it's not got stagnant. It's growing, the size of that traffic is growing each and every month because we're always trying to figure out how do we create content to attract people towards us as a brand. I would think of content in this way as solving the same problems that your products and services do, but you're solving them through the content you publish long before those people know that you have a solution for them. Everything is made easier around growing a business when you have a big audience that you can just start to market your product to. We create tools. This is an example of a, a, one of our very early tools. We created this back in 2007. It was one of the biggest reasons we managed to scale so fast. It's a free grader tool that people can go and use for free. It's called Marketing Grader. It tells you well, how well optimized your website is for all of these different variables. And that tool alone has generated over 6 million visits, over a million leads. And one of the, the biggest reasons that we managed to grow so fast, but again, we're trying to think around what are the long-term content assets that we can create for our audience that they're going to use time and time again. And to do that, you need to think like, funny enough, we think like a media company. We actually hire people you would expect to find in a media company. We do not hire traditional marketers. We try to hire people that can work out who our audience are and what is the type of content we should actually create for them. And this is kind of the same net effect you'll see for everyone who does inbound marketing. It's always the same uh, traffic trend. So this is from our own, one of our own sites. And what you'll see around inbound marketing is that you'll see a hockey stick effect. So you'll see the first you know, six to 12 months, you're kind of building up all of that value, all of that content. When you create this content, it's getting ranked in Google, it's getting shared in social media, it's getting shared by other people to other companies. We have tons of people who email our content to each other, and we generate a ton of new leads and new traffic just from email alone. Like the amount of leads we generate from sending an email out to our database is crazy. But what most businesses do is they give up on that first six to 12 months. They go back to the things that they're used to doing, go back to instant gratification type of marketing, like all of these different channels that just provide instant gratification but don't set them up for long-term success. And for the good news is for the companies who do this, the competitors miss out on all this. Like this is where the good stuff really happens. You can get that snowball effect. 
So to prove my point, like this is taken from 7,000 of our customers. We aggregated some of their data. We benchmarked it. You can see there's like a hockey stick effect. And the interesting thing is not the more content you have, the more leads you generate for your sales team. It's that you'll always see this hockey stick effect. The more you can scale that out, the bigger the results become. The same with blogs. The more you can scale that out, it, the line is never linear. It's always like a hockey stick effect. And the last part is, check my time. Uh, the last part is context. So context is how do we market to people as individuals versus creating a marketing strategy that just treats everyone the same. Like no one wants to be treated uh, the same as everyone else. We all have different needs and wants. So as a marketer, we are usually pre-programmed to think of more. Like more wins, everything. I want more traffic. I want more leads. I want more customers. Your customers hate to experience marketing in that way. They want to actually feel like you're thinking of them as individuals. You're thinking of them as people who have individual needs, individual goals, individual challenges. And this is a great example. So Amazon, one of the best context marketing machines online. This is Dharmesh Shah. He's one of the co-founders of HubSpot. He's a geek. He has a child. They're the things he likes. So when he's at Amazon, these are the kind of books that he sees, things that are relevant to him. When Halligan, or Brian, I should call him by his first name, but Brian Halligan, who's one of the co-founders of HubSpot, he loves the Grateful Dead. He likes uh, venture capitalism. He likes the Red Sox, loves the Red Sox. When he's on Amazon, his experience is totally different from Dharmesh. When you're on Amazon, your experience is different from the person sitting beside you because they're using context to figure out the right marketing experience for you. Context means personal is not one size fits all. So we do context marketing using our own platform. This is kind of how we see context marketing today. It's persona driven, and it should be against all of the different touch points where someone actually engages with a, a part of your marketing assets. We do that by we collect information through our platforms. We have demographic information on people. We have uh, behavioral data on people. So we can actually collect this information and start to tailor the experience for them. So we can go beyond something like, you know, if you see most email software, it does something like first name. And then it says, hi, first name. And like, wow, you've, you actually know what my first name is. You should tailor the whole email, tailor that whole experience based upon these. All these green things are like dynamic variables. We can pull in information about that person and make sure that that email is tailored exactly for them. We have tailored workflows. So when you're actually in the database, every email you get is based upon the information we have about you and the actions that you take. We want to make sure your path is tailored towards the things that you actually want, the content you want to consume. We, this freaked people out when we launched our new content optimization platform where you can host your website. We changed our whole homepage to say, hello, whatever your name was. Glad to see you. When you were here last time, this is the piece of content you read. Hope you enjoyed it. People got a, a little freaked out by that. But your website, is, you know, your website shouldn't be static. Static websites are like totally dead. Your website should be an ever-changing entity that Again, it's tailored for, for whoever that person is. If you send an email that's dynamic and they leave your email and then go check out your website, it's a crappy experience of that website then just goes back to being a static. It doesn't remember anything about that person. It doesn't change for them. We have these things called smart call actions. Our blog generates between 10 to 12,000 leads in any given month. And the reason it generates so many leads is at the bottom of the blog post, these call actions will give you a piece of content based upon the information we have about you. So, you, you may see this, you may see that, depending upon what information we have, but you're reading the same blog post as the other, an, another person. Um, and again, that's allowed us to scale really, really, really fast. We have a piece of content that you can go download, and then you're a lead within our database. Our landing pages convert between 50 and 60 percent. A typical landing page, an average landing page conversion rate is about 20 percent, so ours is about three times that. Again, because we are using dynamic content to tailor the experience of that person. When they're on that page, they feel like it's being created just for them. And the other thing is we hear a lot about all the different social media data we have. Look, it, it, what we're trying to do in our tools is make sense of the social data and map it to different individuals. So all of the conversations taking place on Twitter, we can pull in those conversations that are relevant and make sure that we know who are having those conversations so our sales team are armed with that information. So when they pick up that phone and that's 60% already complete, they can actually have a really valuable call from like day one. So that extra 40% is going to be really easy for them to actually do. And of course, it should be mobile optimized. I'm sure like we're, we're going to hear a lot about cross-device. Uh, no one cross-device purchasing. No one purchases like through one medium anymore. We use multiple different devices. So the experience should be tailored for each device. And this is 
One of my favorite things about mobile, this is the Pope being sworn in in 2005. There's like, I've overlaid it now, but there's, a, there's one woman there who's a total geek. She's got one of the big Nokia phones. She's the only person with a phone in there. And then this is the exact same thing happening in 2013. So you know, mobile is a big deal. I don't think we need to say that anymore. But you want to think about, is the experience a good experience across all my mobile uh, devices? I did it. I actually got through all the slides. Amazing. Uh, the right, so what we're talking about really is making sure that we have the right content, that persona-driven marketing. So we have the right content from the point where they actually first see a piece of our content to when they're in our database, to when they're deciding are we the right company for them. So the right content, make sure it gets to the right person in the right time. And that's how we can actually make sure we stop speaking to our audience like they are part of our crowd and start speaking to them an audience of one. And that's what we're trying to get to in marketing, trying to tailor the experience for the individual. So in by marketing content versus context. That's me, I'm on Twitter, uh, speaking with a thing in my hand. So yeah, if anyone has any questions now, I'm happy to take them. If you have questions later, I'm happy to take them on Twitter. Thank you very much.